Hi, this is Ellen from The Rake Room and today I'm going to show you how to put a fly zip in uh, as in a pair of trousers, jeans or sometimes a jean skirt. So on your pattern you will have um, a part of the front trouser that looks like that um, and there's some lines to record on here. The left side fold line, the centre front line and the stitching line. And you need to record these with tailor's tacks which I'm going to show you how to do. There will also be another piece of pattern, um, like just a flat piece that will go behind the zip, um, and it's just called right fly. Sometimes it's uh, a place to fold a uh, pattern piece, or sometimes they just uh, open out like that with a fold line in the centre. This particular pattern doesn't have one, so I've just used, um, I've just made one myself that looks like it's just a square, um, folded in half that's going to cover the back of the zip. So first of all we need to tailor's tack these lines and also this square and this dot. This is this dot, large dot is the base of the zip and the square is when your is where your stitching line will end but also where the uh, opening to the zip ends to the uh, actual opening in the trouser ends if you like. So I'm going to use three different colours. I'm going to use a different colour for the fold line, the centre front and the stitch line. And you could even use a different colour for the dots if you wanted. Um, just makes things more clearer really. So for doing tailor's tacks you need quite a lot of cotton, uh, double cotton, uh, because you use it up quite quickly. Uh, so I'm going to start at the base here in this dot. And I'm going to do a stitch in the dot, leave a long end, probably about three or four centimetres. And then I'm going to back stitch into that dot. And then I'm just going to cut the thread. I'm going to leave a loop and then cut the thread. And that's one tailor's tack, as you can see. Now for the, I'm going to do another one on that square, I think, in the pink. And I'm going to use a different colour to mark the fold line. So I'm going to, to mark a line of tailor's tacks, just put your needle in at the end, leave a long end, and then do a small stitch, maybe half a centimetre, and then a long stitch underneath coming back up onto the line. And the long stitch is probably about 1.5 centimetres. And where you've left the small stitch, you're going to leave the loop like that. And then another small stitch, long stitch along the line, leave a loop, small stitch, long stitch, all the way along to the top of that, that line. And then I'm just going to cut the thread. So I've got a, a row of uh, loops and on the back I'll have a row of uh, stitching line. And I'm going to use a different colour to mark the uh, centre front. And again, I'm just doing the same thing. Small stitch for the loop, long stitch underneath along that line. And you need to be accurate, you need to be on that line exactly, otherwise, uh, well there's no point in doing it really, the whole point is that we're recording something that has got to be quite precise. Because this is going to be a fold line that is on the straight grain of the fabric. Loops have gone a bit funny, but never mind, we'll cut them in a minute. Okay, one just got pulled out, I'll just pull this one back. I need some more cotton now to do the to do the stitching line. So probably two arms length of cotton is what you need for tailor's tacking because you use it up so quickly. 
when you're doing any hand sewing don't use too big a needle because generally speaking the bigger the needle the bigger your stitching and the smaller the needle the smaller your stitching so you want a sort of average size needle nothing too big otherwise you'll find it quite difficult and now I'm just going to go along this stitching line which is the right there which is, is actually where we're going to do kind of the top stitching that kind of defines the fly zip. And it's kind of the, the last thing we do really. So you'll need to know exactly where that is and also to be able to follow that curve beautifully. It's helpful if you've recorded it. Now there are other ways of recording things through to fabric like tracing wheels and carbon, or just chalk. But probably tailor's tax is the, the traditional way. It's not going to mark the fabric or damage it in any way. And they're easy to pull out when you don't need them. So there's all the tailor's tax in place. Obviously I hadn't taken my pattern piece off at this stage. I had it all pinned on. And if I was doing a pair of trousers, obviously I would record where the zip, the, where the dart was with some tailor's tax. And any other dots or squares, there is actually a dot here, um, that's just to help you line up the uh, crotch seam. So the next thing to do is to cut the loops, if you're ready to take this piece of pattern off of your material, which we are. So now you go along and you cut every loop. And pull it off gently because if you have forgotten to cut any, this is where you'll find out because uh, it won't pull off easily. Like there's one there that's not got to cut. And it gently does it. There we are. And there we have. I think got a knot on I'm just going to cut. So you can see I've got. All my tailor's tacks and on the other side you will see those lines quite um, easy. Sorry about all this writing, I'm using up uh, old muslin twirls for this. So, the next thing is to record it onto either side of your two pieces. And the way we're going to do that, this side won't come out. So pull from that side to reveal some of that loop in like a line. And not all of it, you need some left on this side and just cut down the middle and obviously where it goes around a corner just be careful to do it in that shape so that's the first line then I'm going to open it up do that next one see the, the green one the dark green one And then I'm just going to pull it and do that last one. And that's the basics of uh, tailor's tacking for all things that we record and patterns onto the fabric. So now I've got two pieces of material. These are the two fronts of the trousers. And this is the beginning of the crotch seam, which would go in a curve like that. So the first thing to do would be to uh, join the crotch seam up to a, a point and the point would be that square marker on your pattern which we've marked with this dot so we're going to put these two edges together and we're going to do a 1.5 seam in the crotch of the trousers you've got to imagine that mine are a whole pair of trousers and that this is the where we're going to stop where that dot was and then when we open, when we've done that and we open that out, we've got the opening for the zip. So I'm going to go onto the machine and uh, machine that, and then we'll move on to the next stage. So I've sewn that seam 1.5 from the edge, and I've secured it where that dot was. And at this stage, I could take that tailor's tack out because it's done its job, just recorded where I had to stop uh, for the seam. 
they will come out sometimes they get caught in the stitching but uh, so that one's done its job and I've just uh, finished the stitch now so the next thing to do will be to um, open it out and you'll see that we've got an opening here you can see that's going to be the fold and the zip fly zip's going to go inside it now before you go any further you may this is a good time to neaten this crotch seam so maybe uh, zigzag or overlock all the way around your crotch and then the next thing to do is think about which way you want your fly to be because um, there's a girl's way and there's a boy's way I find the easiest thing is just to uh, think about which way I do the zip up and that helps you and and I think it would be this way that, that's the way my jeans go anyway so what I've done I've done a fold on this side on that green line that I've tailored tax and press it and then on the other side we've got that green line and what you're going to do is you're going to press the fabric a little bit proud of that line maybe half a centimetre because you want to tuck that zip behind you don't want it to show in front you know when it opens so tuck it back you know maybe half maybe two quarters of a centimetre proud of the line that green line that was the fold line and just press it like that so you can see that that is sitting over the uh, other edge and this is why these tailors tacks are so important. If I didn't have that line there, it would be more difficult for me to know where to press it. So I've pressed it like that, and that is where one side of the zip is going to go into. So you're going to have a zip that is um, at least as long as your opening. It can be longer. Uh, it's, it's quite easy to shorten plastic coiled zips. And we're going to stitch that edge close to the teeth of the zip. Now at this point these tailors tacks have done their job. I just needed to know where that line was so I could do that press. So I could take these out so they might get in the way. And I'm just going to put that edge, butt it right up against the edge of the zip. Now at the top of the zip there's always 1.5 centimetres which you're going to need because obviously there's going to be a waistband or something that's going to go onto here. Um, so always Keep the zip at the top of your work, the uh, top of the zip, because that gives you the seam allowance. Pin it all the way down, close to the teeth. Like that. And I'm going to go and um, machine that. Now, if you are not um, very experienced, it's a good idea to tack. Uh, because taking pins out and sewing a zip in isn't always terribly easy so you might want to tack that first so we'll go over to the machine and I'll show you how to machine that in so to sew the zip in you're going to need the zipper foot which looks like this uh, it's universal fits um, most machines nowadays if you've got an old machine you might have something that looks slightly different but um, Probably in the last 20, 30 years, they've been universal. They just have a bar across uh, with two positions that you can put them onto, left or right. So I'm going to drop the foot off on my machine by pressing the button at the back, and it just drops off. And then I'm going to lower my um, zipper foot on. Now, I've just put it on any side to show you that there are two sides, and I need to work out which one I need. That one actually is the right side, but if I put it on the other side, I'll show you. That wouldn't be right, because it's over there. That's for doing the other side of the zip, because with all zips, we go down both sides. Um, that's really to prevent shunting of fabric. So I'm going to put it on the side that I need, so the, the fabric, um, so the zip is over, out of the way of the cutaway side. That's the idea of it. So this flat part of the zip, this piece here runs along the teeth of the zip now it's a good idea to undo your zip to start with get the head out of the way put your foot down so that it's going to run along that edge and sometimes you might want to move your needle a little bit nearer now you can do that with your zigzag dial or zigzag width button 
Uh, sometimes machines only move to the left and not to the right, in which case you won't have a choice. But if your machine does, the needle does move both ways, you can get it a little bit closer. That's about as close as I need it, I think. I'm just going to reverse at the beginning. I'm taking the pins out as I go. You can see I'm getting really close to the teeth. That's zone. Now, because this is proud, I should be able to go all the way down to the bottom. Let's just come out a little bit now. I'm just going to fold that back. I want to move the head out of the way because the head's there again. So put your needle down, lift your foot up, and you should be able to do that sit back up again. Pull your needle out a little bit if it's too close, and then put your foot back down again. And then go right down to the bottom. So you can see that's nicely sewn in. Just got one tailor's tap caught in it there. And when the zip's done up and we fold it back over, you can see that's going to completely hide the zip. And um, because it's set back a little bit, you can't really see it. So the next thing to do is to get the, uh, the piece that's going to cover the back of the zip. So I'm going to um, go and get that and we'll go to the next stage. So here's the piece that's going to go behind the zip. Really that's just to protect the zip from your skin, um, otherwise it would be directly uh, against your body. I'm just going to put the normal foot back on and I'm just going to seam a 1.5 seam at the bottom. This is folded in half just across the bottom there. Just reverse. And then I'm going to trim that and I'm just going to cut the corner so it's right up to the point and I'm going to turn that through and give it a press in that uh, folded state. Push the point out with your scissors and I'm going to go and press that now. Now that piece is going to go behind the zip that you've just sewn in and it's going to just cover the back of the zip like that. Now again this is the time to neaten this edge um, because it may be pretty awkward to do afterwards. So I'm going to overlock it, but you might just want to zigzag down that edge to make it neat. You can see that's nice and neatened. And I'm going to put it behind. The folded edge, you want to be sitting proud of the zip like that. And you want there to be a seam allowance, enough to attach it to this piece that you folded back and again we're going to neaten that uh, probably before we put this on I think because otherwise it's going to be a bit awkward so again I might just neaten that now we don't actually need this whole piece um, although they give you that curved piece on both sides one side you don't really need it now I can take those tailors tacks out that are hidden in there now because they're not required that's because we've got them on both sides and it's only one side that we're going to need that stitch line. So I'm just going to lay that on there like that with it sitting probably 1.5 back from the edge. And I'm pinning it to this uh, fly piece here. So if we want to, we could neaten that fly piece first. So I'm just going to go down that edge there. And I'm going to trim a bit off. We don't need all that. If I lay them on now, it's a lot neater at the back. And I can just pin it to this extra piece of fabric that I've got. So it's not actually attached to the, the zip. You can equally sew it again down that um, where the zip is, uh, or you can do both. Uh, it doesn't really matter, it's all going to be hidden inside. 
So I'm going to sew it onto this and then I'm going to actually sew it where the zip was as well just to make it nice and secure. So I'm just going to put them there and make sure it goes back in the middle. Just reversed over those ends so that I could cut them off. And then I'm going to put my zipper foot back on. I'm just going to go down that side again just to hold it in. nicely held on now and then you've got your fold over fly that's going to come over the edge. Now I'm going to just pin that along that fold line now. Just keep it in position, don't let it move. Put some pins along that edge. These are not no longer required because this is on the other side. It's this this line that we need. So just get rid of the ones you don't need. As you go. And then if you open it up, you'll see that you've got a piece of fabric here and the other side of the zip. And that's what you're going to sew to the uh, the other side of the zip onto. So I'm just going to. I'm going to peel that back. I'm just going to get in here and pin this zip into that piece of fabric. Now obviously you can't get into your um, zip to open it up now, uh, but that doesn't really matter. And I'm going to uh, machine down that side of the zip. Now we're on the back of the zip now, so a little bit trickier, but um, you can still see the edge of the zip. Fold that back and just machine down there. Again, close to the zip. Now when you go around the head of the zip, just go slowly so you can get as close as possible. Just keep near to the zip teeth. Go down. And if you take those pins out now, you'll see that the zip's now machined in, but inside that fold. You see, and we've got that nicely on there. You notice that my my uh, sewing line was where that tailor's tack row was because that was the stitching line. So I can take these tailor's tacks out now. Again, they've done their job. Again, either meeting this edge now or do it beforehand. I'm just going to do it now. It's probably easier to have done it first. If you're zigzagging. Trickier on the overlock. I'm just going to see if I can go around that curve a little bit. Okay, so I can take these tailors tacks out now. They've done their job, they're all on that fold and we've already pressed that and you can see the zips nicely tucked inside and the final thing to do is to uh, do that final top stitching now be careful now move this out of the way because that piece you don't want to get caught down that's got to be free at the moment so fold that out of the way and then you're going to be sewing down this this tailor's tack line. Keep everything flat and pin it. 
And those tailor's tacks are going to help you do a beautiful shape right down to the base of the zip. Now just be aware that you want to see where that metal end is of your zip. Now mine's right down there, so I'm not going to hit it if I go across there. So do check that before you sew. So I've just pinned it and I'm going to follow that pink tailor's tack line now with my machining. Now you're not near the zip now, you're away from the zip. So don't worry about uh, using the zipper foot for this. And when you curve into go over the zip, as long as you're on the plastic part of the zip, it'll be fine. So I'm just going to, oh, maybe what I will do is just put a pin in just to stop this from moving apart while I sew. Okay. Just reverse the top. Now if you don't want to have a trouble taking your tailor's tacks out, just go slightly to one side of them all the way down. Go slowly so you keep a nice shape. And as you go around the bottom, you're going to curve your fabric round with your hands to do that nice curve. And we're going to go right over the teeth of the zip until you get past that fold. You can hear it's going over now. And I'm just going to reverse the face here and then cut my threads. And you can see that I've sewn all down that. If I take the tailor's tacks out now, you should be able to see that it's beautifully in place. And then let go of the other side because the last thing you do is you go across the base and you might notice that on jeans it's extra sewn at the base and that's because they're holding that uh, placket uh, backing piece down so now we're going to go across the base here several times just reversing make it nice and strong And there you have it. So the zip's completely hidden. Ignore that writing on the material. Even though it's a grey zip, you can't see it. On the back, I've got the, the flap to cover the zip. You can trim that zip and uh, if, you, if it's too long, you can trim it and uh, just zigzag across the end. And when I open it, you can see I've got the flap behind. So everything's beautifully hidden. And all you actually see is that top stitching although the zip's actually held in much um, closer to the teeth. There you have it.